Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Marion Street. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, in rising to speak to part four, which is named in a, a fairly anodyne way as administrative and miscellaneous matters, uh, I think the, the Minister was correct in drawing uh, to the House's attention the actual import of this part of the legislation. My colleague uh, David Parker has teased out some of the, uh, the legal implications um, of uh, the process around recognising customary interests, which is addressed in, uh, in this part. And I would like to pick this up a bit, um, Mr Chairman, because we've got a, a situation here where it is possible for recognition of customary rights to be made by an agreement and or made by uh, the recognition of the order of the court or uh, recognised through legislation, through an act. And uh, this, I think, is, is really problematic. Well, the, the bit that I think is problematic is the bit to do with a, a recognition by agreement. So it's Clause 93 and following. And it becomes problematic because an applicant group and the minister can enter into an agreement recognising a protected customary right or a customary marine title without reference to anybody else. And that is problematic. If it is affected through an order in council, then the minister asserts that then subjects it to parliamentary scrutiny. Can I just say that it would have a huge impact on the work of the Regulations Review Committee and would politicise that committee in a way that is not helpful to the procedures of Parliament. The only way there would be parliamentary scrutiny of an order in Council is through the Regulations Review Committee. That is the committee that receives orders in Council and regulations. Politicising that committee is not helpful to the machinery either of government or, more importantly, the machinery of this parliament. And I think that is, uh, it is an unhelpful provision. I'd like also to draw attention to the Minister's SOP. As we know, this 73-page SOP, somewhat more than, well, around about half the size again of the original bill, has... Uh, has changes to these, these particular clauses, 93 and 94, around agreements uh, which are to be called recognition agreements and how they are to be brought into effect. But the difficulty is the lack of transparency around this process. These are potentially backroom deals. These are potentially deals done in private that nobody has access to, and certainly the general public does not have access to. And that is not an advancement of lawmaking in this country. It is certainly not a desirable basis on which to settle this issue, which is, uh, which is fractious and complicated. And so, Mr Chairman, I would draw uh, the House's attention to uh, Labor's supplementary order paper on Clause 94 that actually draws recognition agreements or proposed agreements made under Section 93 under the auspices and the authority of the High Court. And, can, and, and unless the High Court can confirm uh, by order that the requirements in other parts of the legislation are met, that the, that proposed agreement can have no effect. So send it back to the courts. This was the cry from the Māori Party. We didn't have our day in court. Now they are looking to support secret deals 
that will not have their day in court unless this legislation is amended. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, sorry. Call 